right out then. Well, it's been a while since we've done one of these distribution reviews, but today I wanted to go ahead and take a look at Raspberry Pi OS right now on the Linux Lounge. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining Odyssey, the freedom respecting alternative to YouTube. Links in the description. Indeed, as I said during the opening, today we're going to be taking a look at Raspberry Pi OS. Now for those who don't know, Raspberry Pi OS is a Debian based operating system which adds lots of educational software and other things that people might need. Now, the other day I decided to go ahead and have a mess around with an old Raspberry Pi and I've got to say, although it was quite slow because it's an old Raspberry Pi, I was really, really impressed with the default operating system, Raspberry Pi OS. I really actually quite like it, it's simple enough that even a kid could use it, but it's not so simple and dumbed down that an adult wouldn't want to use it. So for that reason I think it's actually really successful in what it sets out to do and that is to say it's really successful in getting first-time Linux users comfortable with Linux and yeah it's really good. So in today's video I wanted to go ahead and take a look at it. Now the first thing you might notice is it's very, very simple, as I said. There's some simple taskbar icons up here and a clock and that sort of thing. There's some quick launch icons for a few things that you might need and there's a really, really nice wallpaper. Now, as I said, this is a very simple desktop. This is LXDE, I believe, so it's quite lightweight and it will easily run on pretty much any Raspberry Pi. But also, interestingly, this operating system actually offers a build for x86 PCs, which is what we're looking at here and now. There's a few features removed, but as a whole, it's pretty much the same experience as running on a Raspberry Pi just with a few things missing. So if you want to go ahead and take a look at this you can actually download it. The only problem is at the moment they only have a 32-bit build. I believe this is a 64-bit build in the works but it's currently in beta so I wouldn't recommend using it for anything mission critical. Now another problem that I found is that for some reason the screen doesn't scale properly in my virtual machine. I went ahead and installed some packages which should enable it to do that, but for some reason that just totally broke the operating system. So my apologies, the rest of the review is going to look like this sadly, but we can still absolutely see what's going on. So with that said, let's go see what software you get by default. So if we open up this little menu, we can see quite a nice little app menu which gives us lots of categories. So this is really, really simple and easy to use, and like I say, no one would have any issue using this. If we go under programming, you've got loads of IDEs and other programming tools. Now, confession time, I've never tried to learn how to program, so I don't know if any of these tools are useful. But if you want to start learning how to program, I assume that this distribution would be great for that, because just look at how much software there is here. The only program that I have any experience with here is Scratch which many, many years ago I kind of messed around with a little bit, and you could pretty much make anything with this program. It's actually really impressive what you can do. It's very simple, easy to get to grips with. So, you know, if you want to start learning how to program, maybe this is the way to do it. The only thing is, this is actually a very old version of Scratch. I think we're up to Scratch 2 or 3 at this point. Like I say, I've not used it in many, many years, but it does work. You can make whatever you want with it. Very impressive. Under education, you get a smart sim tool, which is apparently for circuit design and other things. So like I say, this distribution does put a lot of emphasis on education, but it's not so bloated with educational tools that you wouldn't want to use it if you're just doing general tasks. Under office, you get the full LibreOffice suite. So I kind of imagine if you're a kid and you want to do some homework or whatever else, this will do absolutely fine. And and you can run it on a dirt cheap Raspberry Pi computer, so this is a great option for that. And as you can see, this works totally fine. You get the full LibreOffice suite, fantastic. Under internet, you get the Chromium web browser and Claws Mail. Claws Mail is an email client, so you can indeed check your emails on here. If we open up Chromium, we can see that they have bundled uBlock Origin by default. Now, I would have rather have had Firefox than Chromium, but Chromium is an okay choice for new users and stuff, and I think most people will be used to Chrome on Windows computers, so maybe this is a good choice. But I've got to say, the decision to include uBlock Origin by default, that is a fantastic choice. Now, Raspberry Pis are quite low-end machines, so they can't really handle how heavy online advertising can be. But also, I imagine that a lot of kids are going to be using this, so it's absolutely, absolutely fantastic that the Raspberry Pi Foundation has made the choice to stop kids from being exposed to harmful online advertising, so good on them. And I've got to say, this web browser works fine, you can use it to do whatever you want, and with newer Raspberry Pi models, the experience is actually really good, and you can use it even for heavy tasks like browsing YouTube and such. Thumbs up. 
good web browser. So if we keep going through here, we've got VLC. Now I don't personally like VLC, but I understand that it is very, very easy to use and it can do lots of different things. So for a distribution that is supposed to be user friendly, good choice. Under graphics, you've got an image viewer, quite a simple image viewer, but what more do you need? Under games, you've got quite a lot of games and stuff. You've got Python games, which gives you some example of games written in Python. So if you're learning Python and you want to make some games, well, this is probably the way to do it. Now, if you install this on a Raspberry Pi, this actually comes with Minecraft by default. Yes, this distribution is bundled with Minecraft. It's a bare bones version of it, but I think you could still have some good fun with it. And I kind of gather that kids like Minecraft quite a lot. So a good way to maybe coax them into using a full desktop computer and maybe get them to learn how to program and stuff is to give them Minecraft. I think you can even do multiplayer and stuff. Huge thumbs up to the Raspberry Pi Foundation for bundling Minecraft by default. Although sadly, like I said, it's not here in the x86 version. Maybe there's some licensing reason for that, I don't know. But it is a little bit of a shame that it's not here. Under the accessories, you've got an archiver, calculator, file manager, PDF viewer, SD card copier, task manager, terminal, and a text editor. So pretty much every accessory you could possibly need. Under help, which I've got to say, thank you for including the help options and thank you for making them so obvious. You can pretty much learn how to do whatever you want here. So if we click on it, it'll go ahead and open up the Raspberry Pi documentation online. So I'm assuming this is going to be really handy to people who maybe don't know how to use Linux and stuff. If we keep going, you've got some preferences. The first option in the preferences is add and remove software. Now, as far as package managers go, this one is a little bit cluttered. And the main thing that I can see being a problem is that you can't actually see any pictures or anything when you install the program. So I think this is going to be a little bit complicated for people who haven't used Linux before. So I think it's going to be that if you hand someone who hasn't used Linux before this operating system, they're probably going to stick with what's pre-installed by default. But with that said, this is a Debian based distribution and you can install whatever you want on it. For instance, on my Raspberry Pi, I went ahead and installed Telegram and sent some people some messages and it worked totally fine. So like I said, this distribution is simple enough for a kid to use it, but powerful enough for an adult to have no issue whatsoever using it so huge thumbs up to the Raspberry Pi Foundation. If we keep going you've got some appearance settings. Now I've got to say by default this distribution actually looks really nice. The icon theme is simple but appealing and I quite like the theme on the windows and stuff it looks really nice. The default font is quite cool too. Now the only issue is I haven't actually been able to find a way to change the theme so maybe I would have liked a dark theme or something but as a whole I think most people are going to get by absolutely fine with that. There's a few options you can change in here so that's all cool. If we keep going Going. You've got a main menu editor, mouse and keyboard settings, Pi server, print settings. So yes, you can print from this operating system by default. Most distributions have that, but it is good to know that you can. And you've got Raspberry Pi configuration. Now this is a really cool utility. You can very easily change absolutely anything that you would ever want to change. So there's just all this cool stuff that you can change. Now, if you're running this operating system actually on a Raspberry Pi, you can actually overclock the Raspberry Pi from this very configuration tool. So that's really, really Really handy and it makes stuff like overclocking very very easy which like I say for a distribution that focuses on simplicity having an easy way to configure things is much appreciated next up you get recommended software now this is a little bit bare bones but I hope that this develops in the future because this could be really really handy it's a lot less cluttered than the add remove programs thing but sadly most of what's here is already installed there's a few things that aren't such as some accessibility tools and a few other programs but I would really like like it if, for example, they added some popular Linux programs in here. But as it stands, at some point, this is probably going to be quite a useful utility. Although this is probably the time to point out that you can, in fact, install Microsoft Visual Studio Code here. And that's important to point out because the Raspberry Pi Foundation delivered an update to Raspberry Pi OS, which essentially enabled the Microsoft repository without telling the user, which is a big no-no because that sends some data to Microsoft. Now, I'm sure most people who are using Raspberry Pi OS didn't mind, and I'm sure some people probably even found it helpful that there's now an easy way to install Visual Studio Code, but I would have rather that they don't do something like that without user permissions and instead give users an easy way to enable that repository, but I guess it is what it is. And if we keep going, finally, we get the screen configuration utility, which, as I said previously, didn't work in a virtual machine, but if you're running this on real hardware, it will work fine. Now, last but not least, let's go ahead and take a 
a look at what wallpapers you get by default. Now it's going to be quite hard for me to show you because of the way the wallpaper selector works. It doesn't give you a preview before you select it. But as you can see, these are some really really nice wallpapers which really does make the operating system now my personal favorite is this raspberry pi logo thing if you tile the image it looks pretty cool so all in all that's my review of raspberry pi os i highly recommend it to absolutely anyone especially if you want to learn how to program or if you're looking for a linux distribution that's just really really simple to get work done and I'm really impressed. I think that likely the target audience for this operating system kit would absolutely love it. So with that said, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.